undercover Carson, secret agent. Operation Death Ray, an assignment in Rio. Once I had identified Carl Schmidt, the former German Air Force pilot, I felt I was well on the way to obtaining the information that would lead on to the secret of the death ray. But Schmidt proved a surprise. His blonde hair was dyed black, beard the same. Seemed disturbed psychologically. And I felt certain he was speaking the truth when he said other agents had been at him for information. Best I could do was arrange to meet him two nights later. I was about to leave the cellar cafe when Angelo, Sir Giles Davenport's servant, suddenly informed me that someone else had other plans. Coming down into all the noise and smoke were six pairs of smoldering eyes. Fedor Carson, it is your intention to do you much harm. Oh, ugly bunch, Angelo. Yes, outside I was able to overhear them. I hastened in, Senor, but... But it is too late. I wonder if this is the crowd that waited outside the El Rocco nightclub for me last night. A very sad. Oh, I thought as much. Tonight they are determined that you will not elude them. Oh, see about that. Schmidt. What is it? This den. Any other way out? There is not. Oh, pity. You, you are unfortunate. The newcomers appear to be determined. So, spreading out. Yeah, they intend to approach us from many directions, I know. Yeah, I could try fighting our way, but two against six... Poor odds. I am sorry, but I cannot help. I oh, don't expect it, old chap. Of course, Senor, I have a gun. A bad place to start a shooting. Yeah, I would warn you most strongly against that, my friend. There are many guns in this cafe. Senor, we must hasten to do something. They're all coming towards us now. Right. I'm going to get the pipe out of my mouth. Oh, what use is a pipe, Senor? This is a rather unusual pipe, Angelo. If you please, Senor Carson, this is not a moment in which to indulge in the delights of pipe collecting. But the false bow and screws... Like so. Uh, senor, perhaps the gun... No, no, this is more effective. See? Uh, this strange object, Senor. Smoke pellet. Smoke pellet? Oh, no, I do Watch not... Watch what want... happens when I throw it on the floor. Here goes. Uh, oh, why? Uh, the, <coughs> the smoke? <coughs> Great clouds of it. We'll fight our way out through it, don't you? See, see, Senor. Bye for now, Schmidt. See you night after next, I hope. <laughs> Awkward situation. Touch and go for a minute or two, despite the smoke. But we managed to touch one or two of the Rio thugs in the right uh, manner, then scramble out. Felt like a reviver by the time I reached Sir Giles Davenport's Copacabana apartment. Uh, soda, Carson? Uh, water, thanks, Sir Giles. Uh, enough, sir. Good. Here. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Cheers. All the best. Uh, well, old chap, what are we to conclude from tonight? <laughs> Pipes a man's best friend? Pipes a man's best... Oh! <laughs> These weird pipes of yours, Carson. <laughs> <laughs> Very handy at times. This one uh, came from the Balkans. Quite effective. Mm, but I seem to recall a pipe that was supposed to turn into a miniature pistol. It wasn't so very effective. Hmm? Oh, oh, that, yeah. Oh, checked it this morning. Hammer out of alignment. Thus the misfires. Now, for instance... Good this... heavens, man, don't go fishing it out of your pocket. No, I'm not going to start firing it here, Sir Giles. Well, I wouldn't put it past you, Carson. <laughs> Let it pass. Well, let's have a fuller picture of what happened tonight. Oh, of course, sir. Well, Paquita Riffio, bless her heart, gave me the right information. This former husband of hers was there at Osetayo. A cellar, all right. And he changed his feathers? Sir, beard, hair, both dyed black. Uh, why the disguise? I wasn't able to go into that. Oh, Strange fellow. Seems to be brooding over something. Talked about his honor and self-respect. Said he'd already been approached by other agents for the same information. Is that so, Carson? Mm, yes, Sir John. And has he... Uh... I think not. Even though he's down and out, he seems to be keeping this information to himself for some reason. Said if he passed it on, he'd lose the last fragment of his honor and self-respect. Extraordinary fellow. Mm. Seemed to have a low opinion of secret agents. A lot of people have, you know. <laughs> See what you mean, Sir Giles. Other secret agents. Hmm? <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. But uh, go on. Well, I told him I'd be putting this information to a good use. He'd heard that before from an Englishman. Englishman? Sir. 
That can mean only one thing, Carson. Mm, I know. Englishman working for foreign power. Most disturbing. Try to draw him out on who these other agents might be. That would be exceedingly helpful to us, what with all these various snipes at you. But uh, what did he say? Said telling me would involve his honour again. Made little progress, I'm afraid. But I have a feeling he might come to terms after he's made up his mind about me. Best I could do was arrange to see him the night after next at a cafe a little further along the street from this cellar place. Night after next? Anything could happen in the meantime. Mm, so, especially if the last few days are any indication. Yes, but Schmidt certainly surprised me. Expected to find some fellow in his early thirties down on his luck, but otherwise not much else to him. Schmidt struck me as a man who suffered enormously. Something very tragic about him. No hint what it is? None, Sir Giles. Though we do know something of his past. Yes, yes, he flew those scientists out here plunged into the gay life of Rio, married this fashion model, uh, Senorita Riffio, blew his money, lost her, practically vanished. So, But I wonder how she knew we could find him at this old Satao place. Mm, been wondering himself. Like to know. I like to know many things. Who's organizing this bunch of hoodlums, for instance? Who thought so highly of your interest in ancient weapons to send that loaded crossbow? And who, who doctored that cocktail up at your hotel suite? Mm, keep coming back to that, don't we? Man, it's the one time that we seem to be faced with the suspects. Three of them. <laughs> and what adorable suspects. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but beauty and dark deeds have often been known to go hand in hand, Carson. Mm, true, Sir Giles. Take uh, Senorita Riffio, for instance. Well, uh, she wasn't exactly clumsy when it came to extracting 25,000 cruzeros out of us. But why should she want to drag us? That's the dash point that keeps cropping up. Someone wanted to go through our pockets. But what about that note in your wallet? <laughs> Sorry you couldn't oblige this time. Signed, one of the girls. Mm. Someone's probably trying to find out our game. Perhaps whether we're British agents or not. Then why would Paquita want to know that? Ah, you have me, Carson. But the other two, Mademoiselle Corelli and this Jensen woman... What do you know of their backgrounds? What do I know of Fakarella? Oh, I imagine she's been dancing from the day she could walk. Mm -hmm. Seems to have been created for that. And men. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Miss Jensen? Helena Jensen. Oh, she's got that antique shop, Rua de Uvidor. She has poise, breeding. That's about all I know. Uh, but, sir, I have a couple of days to put in before I meet Carl Schmidt. What better way could I pass the time than by learning more about these two creatures? Oh, <laughs> why not, Carson? Uh, which one first? Well, uh, might as well combine business with pleasure, I suppose. I'll start with Fakarelli. Call on her tomorrow at the El Rocco. Anyway, Sir Giles, cheers again. <laughs> Drank with Sir Giles, thinking about Fakarelli, then packed pipes and back to the hotel. But as things turned out next day, it wasn't Faye that I saw first. I received a phone call from Helena Jansen. She wanted to see me on an important matter, so I said I'd call in at her shop. It was strange how she kept cropping up. I do hope I'm not taking out too much of your time, Mr. Carson. Well, not at all. Tons to spare. But you must be very busy. Why, sir? Didn't you fly out here on some important mission? Important mission? Meat importing, Mr. Carson? Oh, that. Well, really, just routine business matter. Always take time off, especially for uh, occasions like this, Miss Jensen. You are fortunate. But uh, to get to the point... You've uh, tracked down another crossbow or something? I'm afraid not. No? Uh? No. Though it has something to do with one of your very uh, flamboyant hobbies. Ah, must be a pipe. As it so happens, I have tracked down a pipe of Spanish origin that I think might interest you. Always interested in adding to my collection. But this is not about pipes. Oh. Then it must be bird watching. It is not bird watching. Well, I, I seem to run out of hobbies. I was being sarcastic, I'm afraid, Mr. Carson. Oh. Then why have you asked me to call? I expect you remember me calling at your hotel suite several days ago. You expect? <laughs> you hurt me. How could I possibly forget? Please, Mr. Carson. Have I said something wrong? I'm sorry, but that kind of flattery at times grates upon me. Well, then I'm sorry. But I do remember your calling. Well, then, to get right to the point. I want you to know that it wasn't I who drugged your cocktail. <laughs> it wasn't? 
I give you my word, Mr. Carson. And since you must be curious to know how I came to hear about I it... I am. Your dancer friend called here yesterday. Fakarelli? Yes. So that's the other hobby, eh? I apologize, Mr. Carson. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Forget it. I think I should explain. The mere sight of Mademoiselle Corelli infuriates me. I'm being frank with you. Mm, like it that way. Well, I think I'm justified in being infuriated. When she comes in here and accuses me of trying to murder you. <laughs> yes, that excitable French-Italian blood in her. I wouldn't take any notice of it. I happen to be one of those people who rather object to being accused of murder. The whole suggestion is so ridiculous. Even so, Miss Jensen. The cocktail was drugged. Then what is it about you, Mr. Carson, that attracts attention of this sort? Oh, these things happen, you know. Perhaps you have other hobbies still. I doubt whether I could find the time. I dare say it is rather a full-time occupation with what you have on hand. Meaning, uh, Mademoiselle Carelli? We're being sidetracked. To get back to the point, I did not drug your cocktail, Mr. Carson. I give you my word. Miss Jensen, aren't you being a little anxious to tell me all this? Surely, Mr. Carson. When I'm accused of trying to murder you, I'm entitled to be a little anxious. I have told you the truth. You may or may not accept my word, but I've given it to you. Very well, Miss Jansen. I accept your Thank word. Thank you. Your cocktail must have been drugged by someone else. Someone else? In that case, it was one of two people. <laughs> Did I really accept Helena Jansen's word? If I did, it was either Faye or Paquita who was working against us. And as I was to learn when I met Carl Schmidt for the second time, we had someone working against us desperately in Operation Death Ray. Join Lost in Brazil tomorrow for the next episode of Undercover Carson. Also, visit our channel, rumble.com slash C slash Lost in Brazil for more episodes like this. And visit rumble.com slash C slash G-A-R for more radio programs like this.